Numbers are everywhere, so it's no surprise they also exist in programming. Just like in the real world, numbers in programming are used in things like mathematical operations or counting. However, they can be used to do much more than that. Hi, I'm Victor, and today in Height Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at numbers in C Sharp. Before we get started, if you want to talk more about this kind of thing, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Height Above Sea Level, where I do some live coding sessions as well as try and answer some of your questions as best I can. Here we are back in Visual Studio working with the console app that I built in my previous video that talks about variables and this video is building off of that content that was in that video. So if you haven't watched that video and you're not familiar with variables, I would highly recommend watching it first before coming to this one. All right, numbers. There are two types of numbers that you can work with in C Sharp, maybe more, but the two ones that you'll work with the most are integers and real numbers. So what are integers? Integers are whole numbers that can be positive or negative. So you can look at numbers like 2, 23, 257, and 300. Those are integers, whole numbers, positive or negative. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have real numbers. Real numbers are any number, including fractions or decimals, that can be positive or negative. So 232, that is a real number. 223.5, that is a real number as well. 34.9, another real number, and 100, whoops, 100.4. I'm sure you get the drift by now. So those are real numbers. But how do we work with these in C Sharp? So when you're working with integers, there are a couple of ways you can store them. So we have S byte, we have byte, we have a short and the commonly used one, an int, and then we also have a long. So let's start with an S byte. So all of these have a range of numbers that you can you can use. So let's say an S byte, let's say number one is equals to, let's say one. Yeah, so an S byte number one, you can store a, a value of one. But watch this, it has a range. So the upper range is 127. As you can see, I can write 127 and it will work. But if I go above that range and put 128, I get an error because that's going over the limit. An S byte cannot store any number that's greater than 128. It also has a negative number. I don't remember it that off of the top of my head, but I will link the, the article from Microsoft where you can look at all the ranges for all the types we're going to be discussing here today. And then you can use, your, use that knowledge and decide which one you want to use in your program. So as you can see, 128 is not allowed. You can only go up to 127, but we have a byte as well. And you can call this number two. That is in telecode telling me to press, that suggesting to me number two, and I can just press tab and it types that for me. So number two, I can say is, let's say two, three. And just like before, this works. But I know off the top of my head that a byte can store any number between 0 and 255. So if you do something like minus 1, oops, and you see you get an error. If you go 256, you also get an error. But if you do 255, it works. Oops, let me going too fast there. It works. If I type 0, it works. So all these types have a range. And some of them are really, really big and don't need to worry about them. But these smaller ones, like the S byte and byte, have a range. So if you're ever working with smaller values, then you know that it's never going to be above 255 or it's never going to be above 127. Then you could use these to store the number. The next one is a short number three. You can call this, um, this one you can go about 200, 255. So let's say. And put this at 250 just so we can see the maximum bound, upper bound, or the maximum limit. So we can say this is 500, and you can see 
that works just normal. That means number three is equals to 500. The next one we can look at is, maybe let's see if I can break this. So 500, I can go to 5,000, that's working. Can I go to 50,000? Whoops. I can't go to 50,000. So that means I've exceeded the limit for a short. I believe this is 32,000 and something. Maybe we can try that real quick. 32,000. 500. 600. Let's try and break this. Yep. It's somewhere around 32,000. So if you go above that, then it's you get an error. But an integer, the most common one, can go over that. You can even put 50,000, maybe 500,000. And you can keep going until, well, you break it. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. You can just use the value you want as an integer. And this one has a large range and covers a lot. Next one is a long. Again, a long is probably somewhere in the billions and you can just type a bunch of numbers and it will still work. All right, so that is it for the integers. Remember, a byte the smallest, S byte, sorry, the smollest, a byte is the smallest, a short follows a byte and then integer, the most common one, and a long. And again, I will link the article in the description below so you can check for yourself these ranges, but you don't really need to worry about them too much. I've never really thought about them too much. I just know that this is 0 and, 250, 0 and 255, and then these ones are much bigger. All right, before I talk about real numbers, you may have noticed that colors in my editor are a bit different, and that's because I customized them myself. I came up with this theme called the Sakura theme, the one I'm using right now. And if you want to have this theme as well, it is available for patrons over on Patreon. So kindly support the channel if you're enjoying this and you will get your own colors for this Sakura theme. And I have all the instructions of how to add them and make sure your editor is looking just like mine. But moving on, let's look at real numbers. So real numbers, remember, this is anything that it can be a positive or negative value that is also or maybe a fraction or a decimal. And for the real numbers, you can store them in a float. Also, real numbers, real quick, are, can be referred to as floating point, not point, point numbers. And these are floating, floating point types. This can also be referred to as integral types, these right here, integral type, integral type, integral type, so on and so forth. But if you want to work with decimals, again, in order from the smallest going to the highest, a float is going to be the smallest, you can call this number six, you can say 1.0, the semicolon, but wait, we're getting an error. Why is that? When working with floating point numbers, you have to specify if you say this is a float, you have to specify it is a float, a float by postfixing an F to the end of your number. So you see it's working now. So this is, this number six is equals to 1.0. When it's written on the console, the F won't show. I can also do that now. Right console at right line, number six. And then maybe uh, comment these out so they don't interfere. Control K, Control C to comment that out. Control and F5, number six is 1.0, let's say 1.5, let's see how, see, 1.5. The F doesn't show, this is just to tell the compiler that you're talking about a float because there are other types that you can use to talk about floating point numbers. So let's explore, explore them. You can also use a double and call that number seven in telecode, I press tab and can say 3.7. And this one, the post fix is a D. And the final one you're going to look at is a decimal. Call this number eight, three, maybe 10.98. And the post fix is an M. All right, remember a float, Post fix is, is F and it's the smallest. Post fix is F and it's the smallest. Double post fix is D and it's 
the one that follows a float and a decimal post fix is m this, you can also just think of these f float d for double and m decimal has an m so this is an m and just a fun fact that uh, i think i should just throw out there when working with a lot of numbers that require precision a decimal would probably be better than a float or a double especially for things like financial applications or you want very 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 precise numbers that are going to be using application or your program then i would recommend using a decimal also i am thinking of covering this in a next video called operators so be on the lookout for that all right so these are floating point numbers and just before i continue i want to talk to you about something called the random class let's say you wanted to generate a random number how would you do this well the beauty about programming languages most programming languages the ones i've seen is that they come with a random class like this one so if you wanted to create a random number you can store it in a variable called random number you don't have to store it in a variable but just for explanation's sake i'm storing it in a variable as you can see intellicode is already suggesting for me but i'll just type it out so a new random so this means when you whenever you use a new keyword before a class you're creating an instance of that class so it's like we're making a clone to keep it simple that's the explanation you should just go with for now it's like we're cloning random class so this is like an instance of the random class and if i press if i put a period i can access all the methods inside this class so we have the next we have a next method we have next single next int 64 next double and many other methods but the one we're going to use today is next and this is going to create a random number now let's say we want to create a number between 0 and 15 so the minimum value is going to be 0 and then you put a comma so that we are that we're saying that we're adding a second argument and we want to want it to be 15 and you can look at intellisense down here is telling me the first value is min the minimum value the inclusive lower bound and then the upper bound exclusive of a bound is 15. so what this means is that 15 is excluded the number i'm going to generate is going to be between 0 and 15 but 15 will not be part of that run will not be a random number it will not be included it will only be a number between 0 and 15 excluding 15. and we can look at this other console cw tab and then random number and then run the application with control and f5 see 11 close run the application again it's going to give me a random number between 0 and 15 14 random number again 2 5 5 again 13 and this is going to create a random number every time and i don't have to worry about writing some logic to create a random number i just it's mostly just plug and play all right one more thing about real numbers is you can do this bar real number is equals to one point or five and close you see this doesn't give me an error because c sharp the default value or type for decimals is a double and i know this because i can hover over var and i will see on this little tooltip it's type of double but if i put an f it changes to a single which is a representation the way c sharp represents a float and if i put a d or an m sorry that shows me that it's a decimal so if you're going to use var then you have to specify which type you want and same thing with integers the default type for an integer is an int so as you can see if i hover over this it says int 32 me i'll have to say something like byte i'll have to explicitly say i want this to be a byte like that or i want this to be a short all right that's is 
mostly it for numbers and this is going to be just a little bit of an intro so that I don't fill your mind with too many things and just before I finish there's always the question of do you need math to be a good programmer I covered this in a previous video that I would link to the top right of your screen but I can answer it briefly in this video and the answer is to some degree yes but it depends on how much or how far you want to go with programming if you're a hobbyist or like you want to be a junior developer i believe that the high school math that you took should be enough because what you're working with isn't really math like quadratic equations or vectors as much if you're working with game development then you will need some knowledge about vectors but you're not doing some crazy equations with pythagoras theorem what math is going to teach you is the problem solving mindset which you need in programming and so that's the core thing that you need to take away from math and the higher you go the more challenging the problems would be in programming and let's say if you took harder math classes then that could help but if you worry too much about quadratic equations you worry too much about finding the angles of the angles of a triangle radians sine cos theta and all that you won't see too much about them in programming unless maybe you're working with game development but how you go about solving those questions is what's going to help you transfer help you advance more in programming and the same goes for physics but that's all i had for you guys did you learn a about numbers in programming is this something you've seen in other languages and i've always wondered how you implement them in c sharp let me know in the comments below also if you want to get this colors these colors the sakura theme that i made then please support me over in Patreon and you will get the instructions and how to set it up for yourself. Again, I stream on Twitch if you want to talk about this kind of thing live on stream and if that doesn't work, come hang out on Discord instead. Just click the link in the description below and become a member of the Water Tribe today. Thank you so much for watching and as always, from me to you, deuces.